If you're looking for a Civ that's extremely versatile and has some of the best economic bonuses in the game, look no further than the Chinese. Starting the game with extra villagers is already very strong. Add on top of that cheaper technologies and more food in their farms, the Chinese economy alone makes them a top tier Civ in many settings. Their economy is not their only appeal, however. The Chinese tech tree includes many options that you can work towards depending on the game. Since they can research every technology from the blacksmith, they end up with many fully upgraded units in Imperial Age. Arbalester, Elite Skirmisher, Halberdier, Light Cavalry, Cavalier, Heavy Camel Rider, Siege Ram, and of course the Chukanu are all commonly seen from them in the late game. The discount on all technologies allows the Chinese player to more easily tech into multiple unit types, which makes reaching their ultimate composition much smoother. Being able to fully upgrade so many different units has the side effect of letting the Chinese player commit to many different unit compositions in Castle Age and still have it be good later on. They can go aggressive with either crossbowmen or knights in Castle Age. This is not always the best play for them though. Since the Chinese economy is so strong and they're encouraged to get those cheap economic techs, playing more passively and expanding the eco further is often the better approach. Playing towards the late game with a strong economy is usually their best game plan. Though Chinese has many options, they are also missing a few important units and techs that leave them vulnerable in some ways. Lacking redemption in combination with their preference towards being greedy in early Castle Age can make a siege push against them deadly. Since they don't have siege engineers, no bombard cannon, and again no redemption, they don't have an effective way to take out onagers if they're being protected well. This also makes them weak to enemy bombard cannons. When playing against Chinese, working towards a halb onager composition or adding in bombard cannons over trebuchets can give you an edge. Learning about the Chinese late game means nothing if you can't get there. Knowing how to open with them is the most important step. Since they start with 3 extra villagers, minus 200 food, and minus 50 wood, any build that you use needs to be specific to this sieve. The lack of food and wood early takes Drush off the table. You'll never be able to hit fast enough with Militia to make it worth it. If you can't open Drush, then what can you do? Men at Arms Archers, Two Range Archers, or Scouts are all solid openings for Chinese. Chinese farms gain an additional 10% of food when constructed, which in addition to cheaper horse collar makes you really want to get this tech before seeding farms. This would normally conflict with conventional men at arms archers builds as you usually skip horse collar for this, but Chinese being the insane sieve that it is can do 21 vil men at arms archers while affording double bit axe, horse collar, men at arms upgrade, and the archery range as soon as they hit feudal age with this timing. This is comparable to hitting a 19 villager timing with a regular sieve, which is usually pushing the limits of what's possible. Despite missing out on 200 food and 50 wood early, the extra villagers that Chinese get already pay off by the time they've clicked up to feudal age. If you open two range archers, you can go up to feudal age on 23 villagers, which is two more than a regular sieve. If you executed your start properly, you should have only idled your TC for around 25 seconds or less so the actual timing is roughly the same as 21 vil up. For scouts, it's a similar idea. You click up to feudal age on 21 villagers, which is two more than the standard 19. Your uptime to castle age depends on your investment into army in feudal age. If you opened men at arms archers and had constant production of archers from your one range, you should be up around 39 villagers plus wheelbarrow. If you open two range archers and you have constant production from your two ranges, you should be able to click up around the same time. If you open scouts and just added three of them, you should be able to get up quicker at 34 plus wheel. Many times you'll have to add an archery range for archers or skirmishers when opening scouts, so this can delay you further. Keep in mind, the target optimal click up times is useful so that you have a feeling for how the game is going when you click up in game. If you open two range archers and get up on 40 plus wheel, then you're only two villagers off optimal, which is really good. Of course, this assumes no idle time at your TC, so you'll want to check the replay for that. I figure if I'm gonna share my results, I should probably show you how I got them, so I'm gonna go through all three of my builds for Chinese, and also a variation of the scouts build where you add archers as well.
Let's start it off with the 21 Ville Men at Arms Archers build. The Chinese start is uniquely annoying as you always have some idle time on your town center. You can't queue villagers because of a lack of food, so your first priority is taking sheep. It's very important to get this first sheep directly under your town center because you have to force drop food to minimize idle time. At the same time as you're putting a sheep under your town center, you can partially build a house with one villager so that you can use the 9 out of 10 villager to finish it. This lets you get up to 7 on sheep right away for smoother force drops. Your first force drop should happen when your first sheep has 43 food left in it. You should have 50 food in the stockpile if you force drop here. Make sure to always have food under your town center early with Chinese. You'll run out of sheep faster than other sieves, so just scouting with one of them if you're gonna sheep scout can be best. After you have 7 villagers on sheep, send the next 4 to wood. During this time, you should be locating your additional 4 sheep, and then pushing at least 1 deer. I normally dislike including deer in my Arabia builds, but for Chinese it almost feels necessary. If you don't push any deer, then you'll need to go up one or two villagers later than what I'm recommending here to afford horse collar. You'll want to bring in your boar after taking four animals. This means either four sheep or one deer and three sheep. Knowing exactly when to bring in the first boar is inconsistent depending on the game, but as long as you bring it in after taking four animals, then it's the perfect timing. Your twelfth villager can go out near the berries and build two houses and then the mill. You should get between 9 and 12 on boar before sending any additional villagers to berries. The second boar lurer needs to start walking towards the second boar when the first one is at around 160 food left. If you bring this in late, take sheep instead of idling your villagers. Once the second boar is taken care of, you'll want to get up to 5 on berries. Your second boar should be finishing just around when you want to click up to Feudal Age, so you want to rebalance your economy at this time. Villager number 20 goes out to build the barracks on the front. After the boar finishes, make sure that you have 2 on gold, 5 on berries, 7 at your wood line, 1 building the barracks, and the rest on sheep. By the time that your 2 gold miners have collected 10 gold each, you should have 100 wood for the mining camp. Around this point, your barracks should be completing, so make sure to queue up militia right away. The villager that built the barracks can build a house beside it, and then go collect a little bit of wood before coming back to build the archery range in early feudal age. Your goal here is to get 3 militia and then send them towards the enemy base as soon as possible. You can't afford a second lumber camp in Dark Age with this, so make sure that all 7 of your lumberjacks are on a single camp. On Feudal Age, get the Men at Arms upgrade and the Archery Range started right away. As soon as you have enough wood to do so, get Double Bid Axe. Get up to 4 villagers on gold so you can maintain archer production. After you can afford it, get Horse Collar. You shouldn't have too much troubles keeping your TC running because you should have 5 on berries and you should still have some sheep underneath your TC. Once you have horse collar underway, you need to get up to 9 on food, so this means that if you have 5 on berries, you need 4 farms. This will allow you to have just enough food for fletching when the blacksmith completes. Once your 4 farms are placed, it's time to make the blacksmith. At this point, you'll have a ton of villagers chopping straggler trees, and it's worth it to get a second lumber camp with 5 of them. After you have the second lumber camp, it's mostly just building farms until castle age. Since you had so many on berries earlier, it's a good idea to use 3 of your foragers to build farms at this point so you don't run out of berries too early. If your berries run out just as you click up to castle age, then your eco was balanced in feudal age. If you run out too early, then you'll have a sharp decrease in food income before you can click up, which can delay you a little bit. The whole point of going men at arms archers is to be aggressive early, so make sure that your men at arms are moving forward as soon as possible. If your opponent is going Drush or Men-at-Arms themselves, ignore his units until you have your first Archer. You can keep enemy infantry out with resource walls, so just send your Men-at-Arms forward. If your opponent opens Scouts, make a Spearman to escort your first two Archers forward to meet up with your Men-at-Arms as soon as you can. Pure Scouts just can't take a good fight against three Men-at-Arms, a Spearman, and two Archers this early. If your opponent opens two range Archers, you may have to add a second range yourself and start making Skirmishers. If your plan is one range skirmishers against this, make sure that you transfer your gold miners to wood and farms so that you don't float gold. 
You still need 200 gold to get to Castle Age, so maybe keep one or two there depending on how much you have banked. Alright, back to the build. The goal click up time is 39 villagers with wheelbarrow. Once you have around 15 farms, you can research wheelbarrow. It doesn't have to be right at the end of Feudal Age. If your follow up in Castle Age is Knights, you can go up to 17 farms. Otherwise, if you're staying on Crossbowmen, you should stay on 15 farms. For Crossbowmen, you can also consider skipping Wheelbarrow until the start of Castle Age in favor of having 3 more Lumberjacks. Either way, you should have 9 or 10 on gold on the way up to Castle Age and get gold mining upgrade as soon as possible. Once you have your desired farm count in Feudal Age, you can send any straggler tree vills that you have to gold, and then also set the rally point of the TC to gold until you have 9 or 10 there. Also, once you have all the farms that you need, get your second range or add some stables if you're going knights. On Castle Age, you should be able to afford Bodkin Arrow, Crossbowman Upgrade, Bowsaw, and two additional TCs pretty quickly. This allows you to go for an early Crossbowman push while expanding your economy. And that's it for the Men at Arms Archers opening. The next one we'll look at is Two Range Archers. The first few minutes for Two Range Archers is exactly the same as Men at Arms Archers. Start by bringing in the first sheep while partially building a house and queuing loom. The first sheep really needs to be directly under the TC so you can force drop at 43 food. Finding where you're going to send your lumberjacks should be your priority for scouting since you send 3 villagers to wood after you send your first 7 on sheep. Stacking your sheep and shift queuing to the next one increases efficiency so you should get in the habit of doing this. To do this, select all of your shepherds and the sheep that you want to stack, then right click the sheep that you're currently harvesting. This will make your shepherds continue to harvest the decaying sheep while the fresh sheep walks towards the same position. If you shift queue all of your villagers to the fresh sheep, then they won't have to move when switching to it. After you have 7 on sheep and 3 on wood, you can send one of your shepherds to lure in the first boar so that it comes in just as the fourth sheep is finishing. During this time, you should be pushing at least one deer under your town center because, as I said earlier, just one deer makes the Chinese start so much smoother. If you're playing on a map that has two boars instead of two elephants, pushing at least two deer can be preferable. You can send your 12th villager towards the berries to build two houses and then the mill. The goal of your next villagers that come out are to work on decaying animals until there's no more room for them without taking a fresh animal. Once you can't fit any more villagers around your decaying animals, send up to four villagers on berries. The second boar also needs to come in just as the first one is finishing. Again, if you send your lure from the TC to bring in the second boar just as the first one has around 160 food left in it, it should come in on time. Since the uptime is so late to feudal age for this, there's no reason to take more than one sheep at a time once your boars are finished. The goal for villagers on wood on the way up is a hefty 11 on two lumber camps, so you can send your ex hunters to wood. You can just keep 7 on sheep at this point. Once you have your 11 on wood, send 3 shepherds to gold. You should be clicking up with an eco balance of 4 on berries, 11 on wood, 3 on gold, 4 shepherds, and 1 builder. This equals a 23 villager uptime. The builder should be constructing a few houses and the barracks on the front. The barracks needs to be up before Feudal Age so that the two ranges can be placed instantly on up. You can take another villager from Sheep to build the second range. Once you reach Feudal Age, you can have your TC Rally Point set to Gold, again just to get up to 7 there. Once you reach 7 on Gold, additional villagers should stay on Stragglers in preparation to build a farm. On Feudal Age, get Double Bit Axe and two Archery Ranges right away. After that, get Horse Collar and 3 farms. Your goal is to be floating 100 food for fletching, so if you're short on food, go up to 5 farms. This also means that if you have extra food, then maybe you can get the blacksmith earlier before you make any farms. If you pushed extra deer, then you can consider getting the blacksmith before making any farms. Just make sure that you have 100 food just as the blacksmith completes, and have enough food income to support villager production. After your farms, get the blacksmith for fletching right away. Don't forget to keep your ranges running and houses coming up. 
You should have at least one villager building houses and palisade walls constantly until you're fully walled. It's nice to have at least one side of your base fully walled so that you can protect the other side with your army. Remember, the more walls you make and the earlier that you make them, the later your castle age time will be. You'll want to be attacking as soon as you have fletching, which should be when you have 4 or 6 archers. If your opponent opens scouts, adding in 1 or 2 spearmen can help when you still don't have a good mass of archers. The point of going 2 range archers is that you can make an army that just can't be fought effectively a lot of the time. If you take a hill or put your archers in a choke point, or just have some spearmen, scouts will be ineffective. Once you reach like 12 archers, even armored skirmishers will have trouble keeping up. Also, if your opponent adds too many skirmishers, you can add some scouts in Feudal Age, or go for mangonels in Castle Age. Either way, skirmishers won't apply much pressure against your walls. With this in mind, taking bad fights early can put you in a really bad spot. If you lose your first 4 archers because you got caught out on the map by scouts, you'll have a hard time putting enough pressure in time before the opponent goes Castle Age, or you'll struggle if your opponent adds 1 range skirmishers with the scouts. You have to be really careful with these early archers so you can reach your critical mass of 12+. plus. Another thing that you have to realize with going up this late is that you're very vulnerable to any early pressure. Drush, men at arms, and scout openers have to be walled out, otherwise you may just die. Working towards full walls can be good if your map isn't too open, but resource walls are usually good enough. Once you get your initial army out, you can begin walling the rest of your base. The bottom line with walling is that if you're not sure if you need them, then you probably do need them. During Feudal Age, the macro is pretty straightforward. Just like usual, newly created villagers go to straggler trees and then build a farm once you reach 60 wood. You want to go up to around 39 villagers with wheelbarrow before clicking to Castle Age, but you can go up around 37 with wheel if you skip horse collar. Getting up to around 15 farms gives enough food to go up, but if you are late to adding some of your farms, a couple more can't hurt. Just make sure to not reseed anything until you have your two additional TCs down. Once you get up to as many farms as you want, getting up to 10 on gold will allow you to actually click up to Castle Age while maintaining archer production. Sometimes you will have to skip a production cycle of archers in order to click up, but it's not a big deal. Alright, on the way up to Castle Age, make sure to have 10 villagers on gold and get the gold mining upgrade. If your opponent has a lot of skirmishers or is up to Castle Age faster, you should retreat your army. You really don't want to fight until you have Castle Age upgrades. If you do end up losing your army, adding a third range can help you catch back up in numbers. A lot of the time it's better to add a siege workshop, monastery, or university instead though. If you placed one of your TCs on gold, you're probably fine to maintain 3 archery range production though. It's just that more crossbowmen is not always better in 1v1. It doesn't matter if you have 25 or 35 crossbowmen, if your opponent has 3 mangonels, you're likely going to have a bad time. It would have been better to get Thumbring, your own mangonels, or more farms in this situation. Either way, working towards having a strong economy on multiple town centers is the most common way to play Chinese in Castle Age. Alright, that's enough to get started with 2 range archer play. The next one is Scouts. Just like with the previous builds, the first few minutes are exactly the same. Go up to 7 on sheep and then 3 on wood, then lure the first boar. Pushing 2 deer is also very useful. Another reason to get in the habit of pushing deer is that the Chinese economy is very fragile early on because of the 200 food that they miss out on at the beginning of the game. This leaves them susceptible to being lamed and never being able to get to Feudal Age. If you lose a boar and two sheep, you may just lose to any early pressure in Feudal Age because you're still in Dark Age. If you push three deer, it's roughly equivalent to having an additional boar. If your boar gets stolen, you either need to steal one of your opponent's boars or push as many deer as possible. Assuming you haven't been lamed, the Dark Age is pretty familiar. Work towards 12 on boar under the TC and send anyone that can't work to berries. For this, we want to go up to 5 on berries. As a reminder, bring in your second boar when the first one is at 160 food. Once both boars are finished, this is when you should consider full walling your base. You can start walling even earlier if you want, but for scouts you really want to be fully walled by early feudal age. You should use at least 2 villagers to wall at this point. 
Once you have all your food villagers sorted out, you'll want to work towards 9 on wood at 2 lumber camps. The click up time is 21 villagers and the eco balance is 5 on berries, 9 on wood, 2 wallers, and 5 on sheep. If you use another villager to wall, then you may lack some wood or food depending on where you took them from. If you took from wood, then you can always put all of your shepherds on straggler trees temporarily to afford the stable on feudal age. You really want to be able to afford the stable as soon as you're up. At 60% up to feudal age, you should have started your barracks to have it up on feudal. On feudal age, build your stable with two villagers and get double the axe and horse collar. It's really straightforward from here. Produce three scouts and then make farms up to 15. During feudal age, you shouldn't have to send any more to your woodlines if you keep your nine that you had there on the way up. This is the perfect number to keep a farm coming when a villager spawns and is also enough for houses when you need them. The five villagers leading up to clicking wheelbarrow should go to gold. These are villagers 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. On 34 villagers, get wheelbarrow. You should have exactly 200 gold when you go to click castle age. One thing that's easy to forget is the blacksmith. You can start construction of it as soon as you have 150 wood after starting wheelbarrow upgrade. Let's talk a little bit about why it's important to make walls if opening scouts. Scouts take a while to assemble, don't take cost effective trades against men at arms, and get destroyed if the archer's player adds a spearman. In addition to being weak in straight up fights, they cost a lot of food which is scarce in the early game. This means that being taken off of berries may only let you produce one additional scout if you want to continue to make villagers. Two scouts isn't enough to deal with a drush or men at arms, so the game can spiral out of control from there. Getting some little palisades up is a very small cost for what they do. The goal of feudal age with scouts is to create a small mobile army to pick off exposed units and scout what the opponent is doing. Since you often only build three scouts, it follows that your castle age time should be faster than an opponent who constantly produces archers throughout feudal age. This is of course if you don't take any damage. On the way up to castle age, if you have 10 on gold, 15 to 17 farms, and the rest on wood, you should be able to make two stable knights while expanding your economy on 3 TCs. You should also be able to afford bowsaw on up. I did promise the archery range variation as well, so let's quickly go back to the start of feudal age. Make the stable and your ecotechs like normal, and then start making farms. The timing to get the range is when you have between 9 and 12 on food. This is between 4 and 7 farms because you have berry villagers. After reaching 9 on food, get the archery range started and send 5 straggler tree villagers to gold at the same time. You may not have 100 wood right away for the mining camp, but you will by the time they've collected 10 gold. The next 150 wood after the mining camp should go into a blacksmith. At this point, you can resume farm production while constantly producing archers. This play is good when up against men at arms, especially if he goes for towers as a follow up, since you can load your own towers with archers instead of villagers, prevent the tower creep more easily, and go for an effective counter attack against resource walls. It's also good if the opponent follows up his men at arms with archers, but you might be better off skipping sending to gold and just making skirmishers instead. If the opponent tries to just wall and make a few spears to get to castle age fast, you can really catch him off guard if he just expected scouts. Worst case scenario, you force a tower, which makes him not be able to make TCs right away on castle age, which was likely his plan. Best case scenario, you get in and kill a bunch of villagers and win in feudal age. With greater military investment comes slower castle age times, you can expect to be up on 38 villagers with wheelbarrow, which is 4 more than just pure scouts. With all of the openings out of the way, let's look at how Chinese can react to common strategies that the opponent might be using in castle age. Chinese have access to camels, which gives them an effective tool for dealing with knights. If you open with crossbowmen as Chinese and the opponent goes knights, adding in some camels is a good play. Camels train in 22 seconds compared to 30 seconds for knights, so if you start adding them in early, you can keep up on one stable camel versus two stable knights, assuming that you also have crossbowmen behind. Having at least a small force of crossbowmen will prevent your opponent from hard countering your camels with pikemen. Continuing to scout the opponent will let you make better decisions as to which units to prioritize building. 
Against mass knights, you'll eventually want to have monks to help defend your base, so don't forget to add a monastery at some point. Chinese can also make pikemen against mass knights, though that should mainly be used to defend against knight all-ins where the Chinese player is up to castle age late. The advantage of pikemen is that they can be produced on the way up to castle age, whereas camels and monks can only be built once reaching there. Making a big army of pikemen to not die, and then counterattacking with pike crossbowmen in forward siege can be a great way to come back from games where you get behind in feudal age and the opponent tries to finish the job in early castle age with knights. If the opponent open crossbowmen, usually Chinese can just match the crossbowmen production. Against civs with bonuses such as faster firing Ethiopians or longer range Britons, Chinese might have to get a bit creative. Going for a mix of elite skirmisher can be the simplest way to take better fights, but it's not always possible. Against Ethiopians, you could try to add mangonels, but against Britons, with good micro, your mangonels will just die to crossbowmen. Since Ethiopians have a faster fire rate, they can kill units with lower pierce armor very quickly. If you decide to go skirmishers against them, getting plus two armor is extremely important. Luckily, Ethiopian knights are really bad as they lack bloodlines in the final armor upgrade, so you can be pretty confident that spamming skirms will be okay here. Against Britons, the issue is quite different. Britons don't even have thumb rings, so their archers actually fire slower than other archer sieves. This is more than made up for with their extra range, though. Britain crossbowmen will always get the first hit in battles, and they outrange mangonels so they can safely pick them off from a distance. This is the key here, the extra range only helps them at max range. If you can get in close, then Britain crossbowmen are worse than generic. Therefore, going knights against Britain crossbowmen can be a good play. You can still get by with skirmishers, but you won't be able to actually push as effectively with them compared to knights. If the opponent doesn't seem to be planning an attack in Castle Age, as long as you're about even in villager count, you can just boom on three TCs for a while. Placing one of your town centers on stone can help you to get a castle up on time to make Chukunu in Imperial Age. Since Chinese have such a good economy, being the aggressor when the game is even is not playing into their strengths. Making a death ball of Chukunu, light cavalry, and siege rams or trebuchets is usually the goal. If you like quick games, then Chinese is not the sieve for you. If you like to patiently build up your base while reacting to what the opponent is doing, then you're going to have a great time with this sieve. I have a page on my Heroku app called the Simplified Tech Tree where you can see how I rate each unit in each age. I have every civilization there, so if you want an additional resource to help you with your gameplay, make sure to check it out. It's also printable, and each civilization fits nicely onto a single page per sieve. If you want my build order notes that I used in this video, you can check out the Discord and find them there. Thanks for watching. You now have a good reason to Civ pick Chinese. Now go out there and take some games from those Franks pickers.